Consider the combustion of acetaldehyde, that's CH3CHO. Part A, write a balanced chemical equation for this reaction. And part B, how many kilograms of carbon dioxide are formed when 8.3 kilograms of acetaldehyde is burned with excess oxygen? So first, we're going to write a balanced chemical equation. So we have a combustion reaction. Combustion means burning in the presence of oxygen. And so we're going to have acetaldehyde, that's CH3CHO, and we're going to burn that in the presence of oxygen. And oxygen is one of the genuine diatomics. Genuine diatomics are things that end in gen or ein. And so oxygen, when it's on its own, is really going to be O2. And that's going to give us, well, when we burn uh, something in the presence of oxygen in a combustion reaction, if we only have carbons, hydrogens, and oxygens, that means that on this side, we're going to get water, H2O, and carbon dioxide. And that's it for the products. That's just something you should know for a combustion reaction. Uh, combustion means burning in the presence of oxygen. And if you only have carbons, hydrogens, and oxygens on the left-hand side, you're going to have water and carbon dioxide on the right-hand side. So now we have to balance this. Uh, a general rule, if you have an element that's all on its own, like this oxygen right here, you should balance that last. So let's look at the carbons first. There's two carbons on this side, one on this side. I'm going to need to put a two right here. There's four hydrogens on this side and two on this side. I'm going to need a two right here. Now the oxygens, we can use this O2 by itself to finish balancing the equation. So on this side, there's four, or I'm sorry, three. One plus two is three. And on this side, there's two plus four is six. Okay, so we have the one oxygen right here plus two, and then I'm going to put an X here because we're going to have to figure out what goes in front of this. That's going to give us what's over here. Well, we have two oxygens plus four. That's going to give us six. So if I solve this for x, that's 2x equals 5, and x equals 5 halves. So that means this is going to be a 5 halves. Now maybe I don't want a fraction here. Maybe I want a whole number here. That's okay. Just multiply everything by 2. So in that case, I would get 2CH3CHO plus... 5O2 gives me, and this will be, I'm multiplying by 2 here, this will be a 4 now, 4H2O plus 4CO2. And let's check, make sure it's balanced. So for the carbons, we have 2 times 2 is 4, and 4 carbons over here. For the hydrogens, we have 3 plus 1 is 4, times 2 is 8. And then over here, 4 times 2 is 8. That looks good. And for the oxygens, we have 2 plus 10. That's 12. And here we have 4 plus 8. That's 12. It works. It's balanced. Now we're going to look at the stoichiometry part of the problem. So we want to know uh, how many kilograms of carbon dioxide are formed when we have 8.3 kilograms of acetaldehyde. So we have 8.3 kilograms of CH3CHO and we want to know how many kilograms of carbon dioxide. So we should probably rewrite our balanced equation. So that was 2CH3CHO plus 5O2 gives us 4H2O plus 4CO2. So we're interested in this thing and this thing. So before we do anything, we should probably calculate molar masses of these. And to do that, we would look on the periodic table. 
and we're interested in hydrogen, carbon, and oxygen. So first, for acetaldehyde, we're going to have, so let's write it out, CH3CHO. That's going to give us, well, we have two carbons, so that's 2 times 12.011, and this is grams per mole, plus, and we have four hydrogens, so that's 4 times 1, 0 0.0079, and this is grams per mole. Plus, and we have one oxygen, 15.999 grams per mole. And if you do this on a calculator, you should get 44.0529. Grams per mole. And with homework problems, generally we'll leave some extra decimal places and then at the very end we'll worry about sig figs. So for now, just leave it like that. And then we have carbon dioxide, so CO2. Okay, so now we have one carbon, so that's 12.011 grams per mole plus two oxygens, 15.999 grams per mole. And you do that on a calculator, and you end up getting 44.009 grams per mole. Okay, now I think we are ready to actually solve the problem. We did all our prep work here. So in this case, uh, this is going to be a conversion, stoichiometric conversion. We're going to use the train tracks here and start with what you know. What do we know? 8.3 kilograms of CH3CHO. So that goes first on our train tracks here. So I'm going to write it right here, 8.3 kilograms of CH3CHO. Okay. And I'll draw the line here and we'll fill it in as we go along. So first I have kilograms. It would be nice to have this in grams since this is grams per mole, grams per mole. We want everything in grams. And I know that a thousand grams are in one kilogram. I want the kilograms downstairs so they cancel. So upstairs I'm gonna have 1,000 grams of CH3CHO is in one kilogram of CH3CHO, acetaldehyde. Okay. Now that I have grams, I eventually want to get to kilograms of carbon dioxide, but the only way to convert from one substance to a different substance using a chemical equation here is through a mole ratio. So I need to convert this to moles. That's where the molar mass is going to come in. So I want to go from grams to moles. I'm going to want grams downstairs. So since this is 44.0526 grams per one mole, the 44.0526 is going to be down here. And that's grams of acetaldehyde is in one mole of acetaldehyde. Now I have moles of CH3CHO. I can use the formula, the equation here, and I have two moles of CH3CHO will produce four moles of CO2. And uh, remember, we have excess oxygen here, so we don't need to worry about this being a limiting reactant problem. We know we have more than enough oxygen. We don't have to worry about that. So moles of CH3CHO have to be down here, so that'll be two moles of CH3CHO, and that corresponds to four moles of CO2. Great, now I have moles of CO2, I want kilograms of CO2. So first let's convert that to grams, and then we'll convert that to kilograms, and then we'll be done. So to convert moles to grams, I can use the molar mass. I want moles on the bottom this time and grams on top. So that means 
point zero zero nine grams of CO2 on top and on the bottom here I'm gonna have one mole of CO2 okay last thing grams to kilograms I know that 1,000 grams of CO2 corresponds to one oops, kilogram of CO2, and I think I am ready to multiply this out. Let's check that to make sure. We have kilograms of CH3CHO crosses off that one. Grams of CH3CHO cancels with grams. Moles of CH3CHO cancels of moles, moles of carbon dioxide, cancels of moles of carbon dioxide, grams of carbon dioxide, cancels of grams of carbon dioxide, and I'm left with kilograms of carbon dioxide. Now, one other thing you'll notice, that conversion from grams to kilograms happened twice. And in one case, we had the 1,000 up top. In the other case, we had the 1,000 on the bottom. So really, I can cancel those too, because I know that those aren't gonna matter. They're gonna cancel each other out. And now you're ready to multiply using a calculator. So if you do this on a calculator, you're gonna have 8.3 times four times 44.009 divided by 44.0526 times two. And if you do this on a calculator, you end up getting 16.5836 kilograms of CO2. And now here is where we will factor in significant figures. We had two significant figures given to us in the problem, so I should probably make this be 17 kilograms of carbon dioxide.